Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first lesson um, in fourth grade math. We are doing make and interpret line plots. This is lesson 11.6 and can be found on page 537 of your book. Um, like we do sometimes in class, we're actually going to go from this front page to the second page to start talking about examples right away. Um, right here, what we are going to be doing uh, today is looking at line plots. What line plots are, are basically an organized set of data points of values in a number line. Um, for these problems that you're going to do today, they are going to give you a chart that's going to have all your data for you. So you're not actually measuring anything for this lesson. They're going to give you all the measurements already. And you are going to be making an X uh, on a number line above that value that matches it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. For this particular example, it says you have you plant 10 seeds. After six days, you measure the height of each plant. Make a line plot to display the data. When they talk about data, they mean all the measurements that they found. They're right here. And they, measurement, they, they measured it in inches, okay? So you don't have to measure those plants. They already gave you those plants. Now it says it, that you planted 10 seeds. That's why I have 10 fractions, because they measured each of those plants what, once they grew. Okay, now one of the first things that I'm gonna show you here is that in your number line, all the fractions down here are in eighths, okay? But the data set in here, this data set, all the fractions together, they don't all have an eight in the denominator. Well, we have to turn those fractions that don't have an eight into the denominator into fractions that do have an eight on the denominator. That's called equivalent fractions. Two fractions that look different, but they're actually the same value. So this one's fine, one eighth. 3 eighths, 3 eighths. Now, 1 half is not an eighth form, but I know very well that in order to make a fraction that is equivalent to 8, all I have to do is multiply the top and bottom by the same number. So if I want the denominator now to be 8, what do I multiply 2 by to get 8? I go 2 times 4. So I multiply the numerator also by 4. 1 times 4 is 4. So suddenly, 1 half has become 4 eighths. I can see that this is a half and this is a half as well. So that means that these are also going to be 4 eighths. The last one that doesn't have an 8 in the denominator is this one. We need to turn it into an 8. So how do you go from 4 to 8? You multiply by 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. So 3 times 2 is 6. Now, all of my fractions have a denominator of 8, so I can start putting an X on the number line for them. So here is my number line. It goes from zero to one, and here are all my fractions represented. So here's what I'm gonna do. One eighth is right here. Let's see if there's another one eighth in my chart. Nope, there's only one. So I'm gonna go to where it says one eighth, and I'm gonna draw one X because there's only one plant that was one eighth. Let's see if there's any two eighths. I'm gonna look in my chart. Nope, no two eighths. The next one represented would be three eighths. Let me see, there's one, two, three, four of those three eight plants. So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four. Four X's for that. Now, four eighths would be my next one. I turn this one into a four eight, this one, and this one. So there's three plants that were four eighths. One, two, three. Next one would be five eighths. Let me see if there's any five eighths in my chart. Yes, there are. There's one of them right here. So I'm gonna do five eighths. Okay, the next one would be six eighths. That one we turned into six eighths, so there's one of them. Is there any seven eighths? No, and is there any holes? No. So if there were 10 seats, there should be 10 X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So the number of fractions you have here should match the number of X's you drew because it'll match the representation. Now it says, which plant height is the most common. That means, where did you find the most X's? There were most of them. Three eighths. Three eighths of an inch was your most common bean height because it has the most X's. And that's how you do that. So let's do the next one. The next one says, you survey 10 people. 10 people, there's gonna be 10 fractions then. About the amount of water each person drinks in one day. Make a line plot to, displ to display that data. Now, a couple of things to show you. 
Every single line plot is going to have a title. See how it says water consumption because we're talking about how much water people drink. This is the amount of water in gallons that people drink. It was 10 people, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of those fractions that should match, right? And it does. Um, they didn't give me fractions down here. I'm gonna teach you how to do that in a second. And then over here, they have all your data sets. Now, it would be easier for us for all of them to have the same denominator, like I said earlier. So as you can see, this is an eight, 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 eight. We have to turn them all into eighths, and that's not gonna be too difficult. So one fourth, let's turn it into something with an eight, okay? Four times what gives me eight? That would be four times two. So one times two, that's two. All of the ones that say one fourth are now gonna be two eighths. Because if you do it once, don't waste your time trying to convert all of them. One fourth is always gonna be two eighths. So you can go ahead right off the bat and turn them all into that. Now look at this. They now all have an eight on the denominator. So I am good to go. My fractions that are gonna be over here, let's see. It looks like one eighth is my smallest one that I find, and my largest one is five eighths. So my smallest one is one eighth, and my largest one is five eighths. So over here, I'm gonna fill in those blanks, and this is where I grabbed this from. One eighth was the first one, and five eighths was my largest one. That's why I put it over here in this corner. Now let's start counting fractions. Let's see how many one eighths I have. Uh, one, two, three. So I get three X's above one eighth. Let me see how many two eighths I have. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have a lot. One, two, three, four, five. Next I have three eighths. I see one here and that's it, only one. And then four eighths, is there any four eighths? No? Is there any five eighths? Yes, right here, five eighths. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there's ten data sets, so I did it correctly. If you want to scratch out, like, okay, I did all my one eighths, and you want to get them out of your chart so that you don't count them again, that's a good technique to do. Then you would go to the two eighths, and you counted those, so you would scratch them out so you don't count them again. That's a good technique, okay? Here's my data set. Done. Now my question, which amount of water consumed is the most common? So where did you have the most X's? I had it right here in two eighths of a what? Of a gallon. Make sure you include the um, measurement unit. Great. Now let's turn the page. I'm going to do two more problems with you. I'm going to do this one right here on page 539 and this one right here on page um I'm st still on page 539, but problem number three. Okay, so here we go. The table shows the lengths of 10 chameleons in a pet store. Make a line plot to display the data. 10 chameleons. So how many data uh, points do we have to have? 10, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Good, that means that they match and they should match. The amount should match. Um, we, they give us the chameleon lengths, that's the title. They didn't give us the fractions here, but we're gonna fill those out. Um, but like I said before, the first thing that you should do is make sure all the denominators are the same. So eight, 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 but I have some fours. So I have to turn the fours into a denominator I can use, which is eight. So how do you go from four to eight? You multiply by two. So do the same thing to the numerator. Three times two, that would be six. Are there any other ones I need to convert? Yes. And it's the same one. So I can just write six eights, six eights, six eights. Just like that, everybody now has a denominator of eight. I am good to go. So what do we put over here? Let's see. The smallest fraction that I see is four eights. So I'm going to make this first fraction right here, four eights. Then five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths. And this is not eight eighths. This is actually going to be one whole, although we know that's equivalent to eight eighths. Okay? We're talking about inches. So you can see the length here is in inches. Now, the easy part. Let's see how many of each fraction we have. We start with four eighths. I see one right here, and I don't see any more. So only one X, and I can scratch that out so I don't use it again. Next would be five eighths. I see one here, one, two. I see two, so I'm gonna be two X's. Scratch them out so I don't use them again. 
Next would be six eights. I see one, two, three, four of the six eights. One, two, three, and whoops, four. Very good. And next, uh, actually, let me scratch those out so I don't use them again. Next would be seven eights. I see one, two, three. That was my last one. One, two, three. Now let's count and make sure that we have 10 X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. My question, which is the most common chameleon length? So where are their most X's, the most common? That would be six eighths, but really that was six eighths originally was three fourths of an inch. So you wanna make sure that you pick what the original fraction was. We turned it into six eighths, but initially it was three fourths of an inch. All right, and one of the last problems that I'm gonna do with you before the video's done, that's number three. Here we go. A scientist is studying the weights of 15 sugar gliders. Ooh, 15, so now we have more data points. That means that we're gonna have 15 fractions here and 15 X's on this side. Make a line plot to display the data. So sugar glider weights, because that's what we're talking about, is gonna be in pounds. That's why it says pounds right here. We don't have a fraction, but we're gonna find it right there. As we've done before, we wanna make sure that all of these fractions have the same denominator. So I'm gonna choose eight as my denominator. Now I gotta turn all these silly one-fourths into a fraction that has an eight. I'm going right off the bat next to all those one-fourths and turning them, whoops, that wasn't one, into eights, okay, cool. How do you go from four to eight? You multiply by two. So you do the same thing to the numerator. One times two, two. So I'm gonna make all of those one-fourths into two eights. Don't be silly and multiply each fraction every single time. If they're the same fraction, it's gonna be two eights for all of them. Are there any other fours in denominators? No, nope, the rest are all eights, so we're good to go. We want to make sure that there's 15 X's, right? And let's see, the smallest fraction that I see is 1 eighth. That means that 1 eighth is going to start us here. Then 2 eighths, then 3 eighths, then 4 eighths, then 5 eighths. Let's start counting our 1 eighths first. I see one here. I see another one here. Another one there. And I'm going to double check. Yep, that's all the one eights I see. So that's three of them. One, two, three. Now I'm gonna scratch them out so that I don't use them again. Next would be two eights. I made a lot of those. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. That's a lot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Look at that. I almost made it all the way to the title, or I actually did. Scratch those out so you don't count them again. Next would be three eighths. I see one, two, three, four. That's actually all the ones that are left. One, two, three, four. Now there were 15 sugar gliders, so there should be 15 X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Perfect. Now to answer the question, how many sugar gliders weigh more than one eighth of a pound? That's very interesting. This is not a most common question. This is different. How many sugar gliders weigh more than one eighth of a pound? So right here in this chart, all of these were one eighth. I don't need these. They said that they weigh more than one eighth. All of the sugar gliders in this side of the number line weigh more than one eighth. So now I have to count those X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 sugar gliders weigh more than one eighth because they were on that side of my number line. So then these are ones that you can use to practice before you start your homework. Make sure that you put the title, so distance biked should be right here. Make sure that you find the least, um, the smallest of these fractions and put it right here and the largest will be right there. This is the measurement in miles, so distance biked in miles. And they're here, they want the difference between the length of your longest ride and the length of your shortest ride. That means that whatever X here was the smallest, you put right here. And whatever X was the largest, you put right there and then you subtract them, okay? If you need help with one of these problems, I can um, talk to you about it. Uh, do the best that you can, and I will assign your homework 
on Edutone online. So after you watch the video, you can do your homework, but make sure you're watching the video first. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.